the 27th of may 2020 nasa astronauts doug hurley and robert benkin attempted to fly on board the spacex falcon 9 rocket to the international space station hole is complete and we have a go to proceed with propellant load however 17 minutes prior to launch the mission was aborted because of bad weather during a countdown net we continue to violate a couple different weather rules that we now do not expect to clear in time to allow for a launch today we go ahead and end uh, today's launch attempt launch control if you would end the launch auto sequence and proceed into the launch abort auto sequence please isn't it ironic that a group of literally rocket scientists weren't able to predict the weather on launch day is weather prediction really harder than rocket science let's find out on today's episode hi i'm nikhilish and i'm kushal and, and we are the, the two rocket scientists, scientists. Let's be honest here. We've all had those moments where we trust a nice and sunny weather report, only to be caught in a small unexpected shower during the middle of the day. Weather reports are known to be accurate about 90% of the time when they're predicting the weather over the next 5 days. That number drops to about 80% when they're predicting weather for the next 7 days and it plummets to about 50% when that number is increased to 10 days. That little summer vacation you're planning for next month, don't bother checking the weather report because it's most probably wrong. So why is weather prediction so hard and why is it not always accurate? The history of weather prediction dates back a millennia. Back then, informal predictions about the weather were made by observing the clouds and also with the help of astrology this information helped farmers decide the crop that they had to grow based on the season whereas formal weather prediction only started in the 19th century the weather is an extremely complicated phenomenon all around the world many local events like scattered snow showers in new york rain in amsterdam and droughts in moscow are also accompanied by large scale events like a tsunami hitting the coast of india All these small scale events affect the global weather patterns and vice versa. However complicated these phenomena might seem, they are governed by the same physical principles of fluid flow and heat transfer. This means that they can be modeled using mathematical equations. The goal of current state of the art weather prediction is to solve these governing equations using the current state of the atmosphere as an initial condition and solving for some point of time in the future. Sounds simple enough, right? but this is where things get a bit complicated in 1961 an mit professor by the name of edward lorenz was trying to predict the weather he used a computer that solved the governing equations of the flow with the help of 12 variables like pressure temperature wind velocity and others now he wanted to rerun a previous simulation that he did but he decided to cheat a little bit instead of starting the second simulation from the very beginning he started it from the middle and manually entered the values he found from the previous simulation now the computer uh, that he used calculated the 12 variables up to a decimal digit accuracy of 6 digits but the computer printout that he used to manually re-enter the values in the second simulation rounded off these variables up to the third decimal place what followed was the foundation of chaos theory he found that the second simulation produced a result or an outcome of the weather It was completely different from the first simulation all just because of that 1000th of a decimal digit change between the first and the second simulation so what exactly was happening here the equations that govern the weather are a system of nonlinear and chaotic equations chaotic equations have a very special property which is sensitivity to initial conditions a simple example of a chaotic problem is the double pendulum in the case of a double pendulum If the starting points are really close to each other as time progresses the trajectories diverge rapidly An important point to note is that chaotic systems are still deterministic This means for the same initial conditions we obtain the same final solution Remember the graph where the prediction accuracy of the weather decreased rapidly as the number of days progressed This is an exact representation of a chaotic system where two very close initial conditions rapidly diverge as time progresses
For a more in-depth understanding of chaotic systems, do check out Veritasim's video. Think about what that means for a second. If you want to predict the weather of the entire world accurately, you will need to have information about all the variables like temperature, pressure, wind velocity and a bunch of others accurately at every single point in the world. Just think of how crazy that is. Now obviously we don't have information about all these variables at millions or possibly even billions of points around the world. And this is where scientists did something really smart. Information about the current weather conditions are obtained by using satellites, weather balloons and meteorological stations all around the world. If you consider the current state of the weather around the world as a puzzle, we only have a few pieces of the puzzle which we can consider as accurate information. The job of the scientists is to estimate what the other pieces of the puzzle are. This led to the creation of a whole new field called data assimilation. Data assimilation is a tool or a technique that combines theoretical information, usually in the form of mathematical models and actual measurements. There are many different ways of implementing data assimilation and the specifics of which can be a video in itself. The idea behind data assimilation in forecasting is to estimate as accurately as possible the variables which are to be used as initial conditions for the mathematical models to predict the weather. So you see why weather prediction might actually be harder than rocket science. Now, many researchers have dedicated their entire lives to help us try and predict the weather much better, either by using better computational models, uh, better computational resources, trying to get better input data, or a bunch of other methods. Weather prediction itself is very important to us as a human species. Not just so that we can find out what the weather is going to be over the weekend, but in cases like farmers who are trying to predict the weather over the next few months, to plan their agricultural practices or to help governments identify much more in advance when natural disasters like cyclones or hurricanes might strike so that they can try and mitigate the damage caused by these events. So weather prediction is vital in terms of livelihoods, saving lives or even money. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye.